so much for being a part of the service. I'm Derek C. Graves, and I'm the pastor at the Sanctuary of Eagle River, and I've been praying that this service would be a blessing to you. I've been praying about the subject matter. I've been praying about what scriptures to use and how to communicate it to you, and I really do hope that it is a blessing to you. Further, I hope it's a blessing to others. If you would help me in this small way, real quick, I would really appreciate it. We're hosting a watch party at this initial outset of uh, releasing this at 6 p.m. on Sunday, and if you're watching at the watch party, would you share it? Would you share it? Don't start your own watch party. We're finding that it's better if people share um, the video, and so go ahead and share it. And if you're not a part of the original watch party, or you're on YouTube and you're watching the premiere, wherever you are, if you could get more people to be a part of this service, it isn't so much that it's gonna help us, but we went to the trouble of recording it, and I've been praying, and I expect God's gonna move as we preach together. And so knowing that and expecting those great things, God to move, I, I want it to bless more people. And so if you would help us minister to more people in that way, that would be a great help to us. Furthermore, I want to encourage you to be really, really be a part of the service. Go ahead and sing along with the song. Go ahead and clap. Go ahead and lift your hands and worship. Go ahead and really get in, into the church service. This is a Pentecostal church. Go ahead and be a part of the church service. If there's, if there's people around you, go ahead and give them permission to get a little bit extra for Jesus. Go ahead and share your testimonies with each other or give each other your prayer requests. So when we pray, let's really pray. Let's really pray. And when we have the preaching, go ahead and take your notes. Go ahead and look at how that's going to apply to your life and go ahead and respond to the preaching afterwards with a time of prayer together. I think that'd be really good. That's the way to have church at home. And so let's do this together. God bless you.
I feel God in this place right now, and I hope that you're feeling God's presence where you are now also. God really wants to move in this place and in this time. This is a season that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we would think or ask, and I'm so glad that we get to be together. I know that we're distributed right now, and I know that it's just a video, but I'm so glad that we get to be together in faith, that we get to be together unified in what God is doing. We get to be together in the truth of God's word and in our relationship with Jesus. When all of us are connected to Jesus, all of us are connected. And I have, I've been praying about what it is that I should preach about here and over this medium and to so many further than just our church. Our church is a growing church. Our church is a blessed church. Our church has a wonderful culture and wonderful people that have gathered together. People are growing individually into what God has called them to do. People are growing in their abilities and their callings, and it's wonderful. But I, I'm understanding that this is a medium that would reach further than our church. It would reach to new souls in our area that might have never been a part of our church, might not ever, not ever have visited our church, and I'm very aware of the opportunity of this hour. You see, very often we look at the downsides of what's happening around us and to us. We look at, well, I can't go out and I can't get together with friends and we can't get together for a service because of the mandates and such as that. But I see an opportunity. I see an opportunity to reach right through into lonely homes, into lonely hearts, and minister with the love of Jesus. That's what I see. That's what I plan to do here today. If you've been feeling like you're not quite up to it, if you've been feeling like you're not enough, if you've been feeling that uh, maybe in this time of isolation that, wow, I I'm really do rely on my support network and rely on others, if you're feeling like you're not going to make it alone, I want to minister to you today. I want to minister to you through the power of God's Word, through the power of God's Spirit. I want to minister to you. I've got a word from God today about being an anointed amateur. But first, I think we should pray. Would you pray with me? I mean, really pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Close your eyes, bow your head. Let's connect with God right now. You where you are, me where I am. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, that you have called a church into being in Eagle River. Thank you, God, that you've brought us together and that this church isn't lacking anything. We've got wonderful music, wonderful uh, teachers, God. We've got young families and old families, pillars and new people. God, it's a wonderful thing that you've called into being here. But dear Lord, your church right now is distributed. And God, we're in a, an awful, odd season right now. And there's fear, dear Lord, and there's loneliness. And God, I pray that you would minister to us, each and every one of us, in unique ways that only you know that we need. Dear Lord, I pray you would inspire and anoint me right now, dear Lord, to minister, to preach in such a way that people would be lifted up in their faith, that people would be encouraged in their faith, God, that they would be drawn closer to you, God. Dear Lord, if there's a truth that they need to realize, I pray that they would hear it through my preaching here tonight. Dear Lord, I pray that if there is, if there is a lacking in their faith, God, that I'd be able to fan the flames of that faith. And God, that it would rage up. And dear Lord, that it would become a light in their life, that faith. In Jesus' name, Lord, help me minister here. Help all of us to be hearers and doers of the word, not hearers only. And in Jesus' name, Lord, let your spirit minister as well as the word. Let us be worshipers in spirit and truth. Amen. Amen. I want to take us to 1 Chronicles 29, 1, and this is the story of David anointing his son Solomon to be king. And he says something really interesting here in 29, 1. It says, Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom God alone hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. He's talking about Solomon's inexperience, and Solomon is really too young to be taking on such a big job creating a palace for the Lord God Almighty. And he's really too inexperienced, and really he's too much of an amateur. He's tender. He hasn't been shaped by the work yet. And, and so he's an amateur in ruling. And David is saying he's young and he's tender, and the work is great. Yes, all of these things are true. You might feel young and tender. You might feel inexperienced in your faith. You might feel that you're not strong strong enough in the work of living Christian, the work of overcoming sin, the work of not being the person who used to be and now being the new person made new by Christ is too great for you. And I would say, yes, it is too great for you. But the palace, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. You're being remade. You're having, you have newness of life, not for yourself, not for yourself, but because God is coming into your life. 
It's a powerful thing to be an amateur relying on God. Very often we feel inexperienced. Very often we feel enabled like Solomon was. He really was enabled, and he really was young and inexperienced. But God has chosen Solomon in this story, and God has chosen you to be saved. God's chosen you to be a part of his kingdom. And who can unchoose you when God has said, that's my person, that's my man, that's my woman. I've called them. See, the palace isn't for man. The glory isn't for man. The honor isn't for man. And he isn't calling you to new life so that you can glory and be in a new person. He's calling you into new life because he's going to receive glory. Because he's going to make it happen. How can we be confident when the challenge is so great? How can we be confident when the work is so great? Because it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's by his spirit. It's by his power that we as amateurs can accomplish great things. Isaiah 43, 19 says this, Behold, it's one of my favorite scriptures, Behold, I will do a new thing. This is God speaking. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We find ourselves in a wilderness of wonder right now, uncertainty right now today. We are navigating a deadly desert of despair in this hour. But like Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so it is a new season. This is a new season, but the people of God have been in new seasons and new places before. And we have been carried by God. We have been helped by God, led by God to overcome the newness of the season and be who God has called us to be the present state of affairs, I need to tell you this, the present state of, this, of affairs surprised a lot of people. It surprised our stockpiles of medical equipment. It surprised many doctors and hospitals. It surprised politicians. It surprised me. I didn't expect this sort of thing. But let me tell you this, God was not surprised by the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. God is not surprised by it. And God has equipped his church to overcome it. We're doing it now. Our church is doing wonderfully in this hour, and I'm so excited when we get to come together again. When we get to, get to come together with all those that are a part of our care groups all over the place. When we get together with all those who are watching these services that haven't been a part of our services before, but now they've, they're deciding, I'm going to go ahead and go and visit that church. I'm going to see what it's like in person. You need to do that. Our worship is off the chain. <laughs> but this st present state of affairs did not surprise God. Coronavirus, COVID-19, it didn't catch God off guard. By God, all things are able. With God's anointing, amateurs can overcome anything. Let me give you this. Let me put this in your mind. If you know the story of David, who was the, the father in our, our first verse, um, anointing Solomon, David, David had never fought a giant before. But David had been anointed. And so David went to war in the name of the Lord, and he overcame. Because it doesn't matter that David hadn't been in a war before. It didn't matter that David didn't know how to strap on the armor and that it didn't fit him. It didn't matter that he was using the wrong weapons even. What an amateur he was. No, no, what, what really matters is that he was on the side of God. What really, really mattered was that he came in the name of the Lord for the honor and the glory of God. Noah lived righteous before God, but he'd never built a boat before. And God spoke to him. God spoke into his life. And Noah had the presence of God in his life. And, and even though he's an amateur boat builder, God called him to build an ark that would save his family when the rest of the world was being washed away. His family would be saved, anointed. David literally anointed. Moses anointed with the word of God. It's a powerful thing to be anointed. It's more powerful than being experienced. It's more powerful than being educated. It's more powerful being anointed. It's been noted that amateurs built the ark and world experts built the Titanic. It's been noted that Noah wasn't supposed to know what he was doing, but he succeeded. And the world's greatest engineers and builders who built the Titanic failed after boasting that God himself couldn't sink 
the Titanic. That's because overcoming, like Zechariah 4, 6 says, is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. In my love for the people of Eagle River, in the calling that I have for the people of Eagle River, and knowing that there is a great vision for what God will do in this place, I called some missionaries this last week to talk to them about having house church. I knew that we were going to be having house church again, and I called missionaries specifically that had been persecuted. They'd been in areas where they were not allowed to meet in a home church, and so they had distributed house churches like we're doing now, us not being, or not supposed to uh, meet. And so I, I talked to them, and, and they were forced to use house churches like we're being forced to now. And the wisdom of these veteran missionaries who had suffered persecution, and they had to do house church, and they had to do it well because it was the only way the church was going to grow, the wisdom that came back from them was that it came down to leadership and communication. And when we talked about leadership, one of the key things was they said, you've got to trust people. You're not going to have seasoned people and experts that you can start a house church with. You're going to have to use amateurs. You're going to have to use the inexperienced and you're going to have to be kind to them and you're going to have to support them as they learn on the job. That was the wisdom that I got back from several missionaries who had done very well with house churches. You have to use the inexperienced and you have to support them with communication. One missionary said when he would set up a pastor of a new house church, he would sit them down and tell them, you will fail me. You will burn out. And I will relieve you when I feel like you need to. But I'm also going to support you all the way through. What a commitment. What an acknowledgement. What a powerful place to be as that new pastor. That you know what? It's okay. It's expected that I'm not going to have it all together. And it's okay. I'm going to be supported all the way through. And if it comes to where I can't continue on, then there's relief for me. They're going to take care of me. These missionaries, of course, having the, high, the mind and the, and the, having the heart and mind, these missionaries, of course, having the, these missionaries, of course, having the heart and mind of God, we're just doing what God does with us. Jesus calls the amateur. He goes to the fishermen and says, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. And God communicates with these fishers of men and all the disciples. Even after he goes away, God communicates with them through the power of the Holy Ghost. And he leads them. The way for the amateur, and this is maybe the biggest point of this sermon, the way for the amateur to overcome today. If you feel like you're an amateur, you feel like you're new to this, you feel like you don't have it all together, and I hope that you don't because none of us have it all together. If you feel like maybe I, I could use some more experience, I could use some more education, the way forward for the amateur to overcome today in the wilds of the wandering and the desert of despair is a commitment to pursuing an anointing that comes from God. That is how you overcome. Don't wait until you have all the education. Don't wait until you've gained all the experience. Commit to overcoming. Commit to a pursuing the anointing of God most high. Because with him, all things are possible. It, you plus God is a majority, one preacher said. You're going to be able to do what it is he's called you to do. You're going to be able to overcome sin. You're going to be able to go ahead and separate yourself from that past life. You're going to be able to go ahead and reach out and save those that you love. By the power of the anointing of God. It's okay that you're an amateur. It's okay that you feel like you're over your head. That you're in the deep end of the pool. That's all right I tell you I live in the deep end of the pool it's okay that you're an amateur for God as long as you're for God as long as you're ready to receive his anointing as long as you pursue the spirit of God and the leading of that spirit the commitment is not to perfection but the commitment is to faithfulness and if you will decide now, I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm going to do what God says for me to do. I'm going to pursue the Spirit of God. I'm going to pray until I feel the presence of God. I'm going to use just the book and not add anything to it or take anything away from it. You are going to be able to overcome the obstacles that do come. You're going to be able to overcome the temptations and the trials of this life. It rains on the just and the unjust. Who is it that survives? Those that build themselves on the rock. And so you must be anointed to your purpose. The righteous man arises one more time than he falls. You must be committed, not to perfection, but be committed to pursuing the will of God. Be committed to pursuing a relationship with God so that you will be anointed. 
I'm going to continue until it happens. I'm going to get up again until it works out. Loyalty to God is what is paramount. The fishermen became fishers of men through error and failure. I don't know if you've studied them this much, but I will tell you that the fishers of men, those disciples that followed Jesus, they asked some foolish questions. And they did some impertinent things. And they cared about the wrong things. And they argued and they bickered. And Jesus, Jesus helped them all the way through it. And he taught them. And he led them. And he, he calibrated them and reoriented them. And they were still the apostles. They were still anointed to be his church planters in all the world and to turn the world upside down by the doctrine and the gospel of Jesus. They were still the apostles, even though they made all those mistakes. They were still anointed by Jesus to carry him into all the world. God still built a world-changing church on their efforts. You can begin. You can start, even though you're afraid. You can begin, and you can start, and you can pursue God. And ask Him to help you overcome. Ask Him to anoint you with His Spirit that you'd be able to overcome. You could win, even though you're inexperienced. You receive perfect love. The Bible says fear... <clears throat> The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. And I, very often it's fear that keeps people from doing what I'm encouraging you to do today, which is start. Start living for God in a greater degree. Start living for God in a way that... that <laughs> What's going to keep you from starting? It's fear. Fear is what will keep you from starting, but the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. You need to get closer in your relationship with God so that his love can come into your life and cast out the fear, and now you're ready to do what it is he's calling you to do. Maybe he's calling you into a deeper relationship with him in prayer and study. Maybe he's calling you to bless somebody else. Maybe he's calling you above and beyond what you were taught before to a greater commitment, a greater expression of faith. Maybe he's calling you out of some falsehoods into his marvelous light. I don't know what he's calling everybody here for, but I will tell you that fear will cripple you in that pursuit. But perfect love casts out fear. And so I'm encouraging you to pursue the anointing of God. Pursue the anointing of God. Pray until the Holy Ghost moves on you. Put aside every other thing. Set all the stuff down and, and, and focus yourself on God. Fast a little. Pray a lot. Study the word and receive it and allow it to push out the junk in your life. You must commit before you succeed. You can begin. Even though you're afraid, you can begin. You could win even though you're inexperienced. You could receive that perfect love that casts out fear. By going to God in repentance. Go to God and tell him you're sorry for the things you're sorry for. Go to God and ask him to forgive you for the sins that are in your life. Go to God and ask to be remade. God, I don't want to be the person that does those things anymore. I don't want to be bound by fear that somebody's going to find out. God, I don't want to be shackled by shame that I can't even think right about myself. God, help me to be free from these things. That is the place that you receive perfect love is in repentance. You need to repent of everything that would hold you back from being anointed by God. We serve a holy God. We serve a holy God, and he does not anoint dirty and defiled things. And so get yourself clean. Receive the blessing of his perfect love and repent of all the things you know that separate you from the holy God. You must commit before you succeed. If you're looking for actions to take in response to this, you must commit to God before you succeed. You're not going to get to succeed without God and then commit to God. You must commit before you succeed. I, I, was, I, I built these care groups recently. I asked different ones in our different neighborhoods to care for those that are in their neighborhoods. They're called our care coordinators. And one of them called me back and said, you really like to push me out of my comfort zone, don't you, Pastor? And my answer is, yeah, sometimes. The underlying principle is this, that out on the limb is where the fruit is. That you got to extend yourself a little bit. you got to grow to be everything that God has called you to be. And so I, I push people a little bit. I encourage people to stretch out and, and see what God will meet them in. 
Reach out and learn that his hand is not short. Step out of the boat and learn that he is able to keep you from falling. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to, to take this step. It might be a big step of faith for you, but take the step of being baptized in Jesus' name. You've got to commit before you succeed. You don't get baptized after you get your life all together. You don't get baptized after you're a perfect Christian and you've been on the pew for five years. No, you get baptized, you commit yourself to taking on the name of Jesus so that you can succeed, so that you can overcome, so that you can live a new life. The Bible says that in baptism, we are buried with him. We're buried with Jesus and then we rise in newness of life like he rose. And now you have a new life. And now the old man is dead and passed away. And now you can live. You need to commit before you succeed. That principle continues after the plan of salvation. When God calls you into ministry, you need to commit before you succeed. When God calls you to do an act for him, he calls you to walk in the spirit and pray for somebody or call somebody or whatever the case is, you need to commit before you succeed. Not let me try it on and then I'll, I'll commit afterwards after it works out. No, you got to commit before you succeed. And then after you commit, he is with you and helping you to overcome. We keep the newness of life by continually living by faith and not by education and experience. I've been talking this whole time about being anointed amateurs. We need a church of amateurs. We need a church of people who know that it's not by my strength. It's not by my might. It's not by my wisdom. Like Paul said, I did not come to you with cunning wisdom and, and men's words. I, I came to you with a demonstration of the Spirit. We need to be anointed people of God. And it's okay to be new and anointed. That's all right. We keep the newness of life by continuing to live in faith. We walk in the spirit, not by sight. That's what I'm talking about in being an anointed amateur. Anointed amateurs turn the world upside down. They go to the old friend group and they show them how they're living a new life and they don't do what they used to do and they're free from what held all of them back in the past. And, and anointed amateurs are, are who get the work done. Anointed amateurs worship like nobody else worships, and they get excited in the church service. Anointed amateurs run the aisles, and anointed amateurs approach people in Walmart and ask if they can pray for them. Anointed amateurs is what God is excited about building. We need to keep that spirit, that newness of life by walking in the spirit. After you have repented and been baptized in Jesus' name, there is a promise to you, an anointing promised to you, and that is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You find it in Acts 2. At the end of Acts 2, a group of people gather around and they realize that they murdered Jesus. And the Bible says that they were pricked in their heart. And they say to the, to the disciples, these, these anointed amateurs, they call up to them and they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? They recognize that they are sinners down in the street. So they, they call out to the, these anointed amateurs and they ask, what are we going to do about it? And, and Peter, Peter preaches to them and he says, you need to repent. And you need to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's not something that you force God to give you. It's not something that you wrestle down from heaven and stick in your pocket. It is a free gift that God has promised all those that are afar off. That's in the Bible. The Bible promises that the Holy Ghost is available to every nation. You might say, well, that's good for you, but I'm different. No, the Bible promises it to you. If you need a Bible study on this, we'll, we'll have a Bible study one-on-one -on -one over the internet about the Holy Ghost and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But that's the anointing that I'm talking about here tonight. We need to walk in the Spirit. The promise of the anointing, the thing that David's oil was a type and foreshadowing of, the thing that Noah's direct word was a promise to the future of, was the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You must be filled with His Spirit, and then He's going to talk to you like He talked to Noah. And he's going to empower you like he empowered David. It's a powerful thing. Closing with David. I need to give you the story of David and the light of this message. David was an amateur musician. And he played the harp and he sang spiritual songs to daddy's sheep out on the back 40. He was a, an amateur musician, and later he would, he would write songs, and I believe some of them were, were sung in that time, but later he would write songs about repentance. He would write songs about commitment. He would write songs about the change that God makes in men's lives. 
This anointed but amateur musician was eventually actually anointed by the prophet of God. God told his man to go to David's home. And David was forgotten and David was passed over until God made it abundantly clear that this amateur musician was about to be anointed. And they called him out of obscurity. He'd been talking to God. He'd been singing to God. But God called him out of obscurity and in front of his family anointed him with oil to be the next king. Now David is anointed. He's anointed and, and God's presence is with him. And God called him a man after his own heart. But David, David is not the king yet. David goes on and later he's an amateur at war. He's the boy bringing the cart full of, full of food to his brothers and others on the front line. And he's an amateur to war. And they even accuse him of just being a looky-loo and being there to spectate. But you have to remember that this amateur musician and now this amateur warrior was anointed by God. And he looks around and he sees the challenge of the enemy and he sees the cowardice of God's people. And he's just too amateur to understand the stakes. He's too amateur to know that he doesn't have a chance like everybody else knows. And he looks around and he asks this. It's such a powerful question. He says, is there not a cause? He marches out onto the field and this man who was an expert fighter, this giant Goliath, the Bible says he was a warrior from his youth. He's an expert being challenged by an anointed amateur making fun of the young boy David, saying, what are you, come out here with sticks to beat me like a dog? And, and David says to him, you come against me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. And that was all the difference. That changes everything when you're anointed, slaying giants and building faith. Let's pray. Let's pray that God would anoint us. Let's pray that we wouldn't be in this fight. Let's pray and commit ourselves to Jesus before we figure it all out, trusting that he's going to draw near to us also. That's a promise from the Bible. That if you draw near to him, he promised he's going to draw near to you. And if you've got a hunger in your soul, what I've preached on here tonight grows that hunger, draws you in, shines a light on your situation. You, you do need one. You need an anointing. It's time to pray for that. It's time to commit it. It's time to put away Put away vain traditions. Put away things you thought you knew about yourself. Put them away. And start pursuing God. Start to pray. And start to read the Word. Receive a Bible study from somebody who's skilled in teaching. Fast. Receive the Holy Ghost. Be baptized if you need to be baptized. Repent of all your sins again. Let's pray. Your Lord, I pray that you're the Lord. All those that hear this. God, the presence of your spirit there and now, your Lord around them, God, that it would be in them, that they would be vessels of oil, those miracle workers in the Old Testament, vessels of oil, your Lord, that they would be able to pour out the blessings of God, that they would be valuable from the inside out, God, that they would be made to know their worth in Jesus' name, that they'd be used for the purpose of your favor, your Lord, to be in a right relationship with you, God, I pray for the anointing to fall. so much for being a part of this service. It was a great time that I really enjoyed and I hope you were blessed. And if you were blessed or you know somebody else who might be blessed by the subject matter, go ahead and send them a link. Go ahead and share it with them. Go ahead and tag them in this if you can. However is best to get it to them. We want to share the good news. We want to share the power of God. We want to share what's happening in Eagle River. There's one big invitation that I need to make to you right now, especially if you live near us. This is for those that live in or around Eagle River. We have care groups that we've started during this pandemic to make sure that our neighbors, and our members and our new people, everybody's taken care of. And what it is, is there's a care captain or a care coordinator near you. And if you give us your email and your phone number, they're going to check on you every week at least and make sure that you're okay. And if there's a need that they find in your community, they're going to invite you to be a part of the solution for that need. 
It's a really wonderful program. A lot of people are really excited about it. I want you to be a part of it if you live nearby us. Furthermore, Tuesday night we have a prayer meeting at 7 p.m. If you can at all be a part of this, it's a powerful time. I'm going to lead the group through the tabernacle uh, plan of prayer, and we're also going to take prayer requests and support each other as the body of Christ. That's at 7 p.m. over Zoom. On Thursday night at 7, we're going to have a Bible study. We're going to continue the Elements of New Life Bible Study, which is an extraordinary Bible study, and I hope you'll be a part of it. Now, both of those meeting, meetings, Tuesday night at 7, Thursday night at 7, prayer and Bible study, both of those are going to be Zoom meetings, and we're not publishing those links publicly anymore because people have been playing pranks and things like that. And so we need your email address directly sent to us so that we can, sorry, so that we can directly invite you. And so that only the people that, that are supposed to be there are there. We would love to make it a public thing, but we just can't leave ourselves open to some of the nastiness that's been going around. So God bless you. God bless you this week. I hope that we'll continue to get to be the church together through care groups, prayer meeting, and Bible study. And God bless Eagle River, and God bless you.